Today is a little bit different. I have some projects I want to try and do. Let's talk about it. I went to the store and I got myself this premium potting mix and these two um, containers. I also got myself a sponge filter and a trigger sprayer. I say trigger sprayer, but it's just a bottle that sprays. So the plan is to grow plants immersed, which means they're out of water. Submersed means they're in water. And the plants I'm going to do is I have this Anubis mini nana anubis nana uh, that just ended up it was glued and it ended up just sprouting out i think that people got it i also have this nano this dwarf sword leaf plant let's get started so i'm just going to pour in this bucket some soil this is nice it's already moist and it's already got a lot of stuff in there I do think this has also some trace elements, so I don't have to really worry about fertilizing. And if I did, I will add later on. I'm just going to cover. And that's about it. That's all I'm going to use. I'm not going to use a lot of it. I'm just going to pat it down a little bit. That's it. Cool. Now, for the sword leaf, right about here, I'm just going to plant it in underneath everything. Just cover it. Eventually it will find its own roots. It will do its own, own thing. With this plant, there's a problem now. You see these rhizomes? You see those rhizomes right there? They're about here, these things? You can actually cut that and that will be its own individual plant. Now I was able to get like three plants from there. So this is one. I don't think this one will grow, but I'm just going to leave it there. So what you want to make sure is that the rhizon on Anubis does not get buried. Because once it's buried, it will go rotten. It needs that little airflow type of thing. These are just some leaves that I don't think will work. But we'll see how they go. So now I'm just going to mist it. It's already damp. So I'm just going to make sure it gets a good squirting. There we go. And then I want to close the lid and hope for the best. That area gets about more than six hours of sunlight and it's been really hot here in Australia. So what I'm going to do is periodically check this every two weeks, but I should only be watering like once every month or so, but we'll see. Cool. So the next project is to do with this. I always look to the right, but the camera is on the left and I have to remember that. <laughs> this is a 40 liter tub. It's wide and I want to breed live black worms in it. The reason I chose is because of how wide it is. This should be able to um, help accommodate for them. I also got myself this little sponge filter. It is tiny. Um, just to show you a comparison, this is a bag of algae wafers but it is suited for a hundred liters so this will be more than enough for this 40 liter tub and i'm thinking i'm putting it right there i just need to get gravel and the blood worms and that seeded because i don't want to wait a month now if you're new to the hobby and you don't know um you need to cycle your tank which pretty much allowing bacteria to grow in the tank until it can handle ammonia and break it down to nitrite and break it down to nitrate. Now, they're all, I think they're all three different types of bacteria. And you can add bacteria style and stuff, but it's better to always do a fish in or a fishless cycle. A fishless cycle is when you just add a bit of food to it. It will break down, go moldy. It will, it will do, go through its process until the bacteria grows enough to deal with that. And a fish in cycle is when you have a little fish, a little bio load. Bio load is like how much they poop and stuff. Just a little bit of it until it's, it gets to the same thing. All the bacteria grows. Now, a faster method of doing that is to grab your sponge filter and shove it in your tank. And let it run if you already have a tank. If you have a friend that has a tank, you can like tell him, can you put this in there for like um, a week or two? And then it should be ready to handle.
I'm gonna run that sponge filter in there until I get everything sorted, which will be like a month anyway. <laughs> uh, now, one thing I would say to you, and it's a tip, if you're going to go down that method of using someone else's tank, or even if you even if you're gonna buy secondhand things from people who have already used like gravel and stuff, you are risking whatever they went through with that tank. I bought a sponge filter from another tank from a, from a random guy on Gumtree, which is like Craigslist, right, in, in Australia, and it ended up having mosquito larvae in it. And mosquito, uh, no, dragonfly larvae and, and dragonflies started growing in the tank and I had to kill them every time I saw it and it was a whole process. But just be careful because even though the tank might be good, you don't know what that tank's going through and adding that sponge filter back into that can be a bit detrimental. So you just got to be careful with it. I know what's happening in this tank. I've fought it for years. Right now it's fine and I think we'll be okay. And of course, if there's something that comes up, I'll deal with it. So to do that, if you've never seen it before, there are three components to the sponge filter. We have this, it's a weight. That's all it is. It's just a weight that goes down. You have this part, you have the sponge, which is empty right now. And then you have this that goes and connects to this, like that. Now, the way it works is uh, right here, there is a place for an airline tube. Once you plug the airline tube in and it's all assembled, we'll pump air in it through it. That's it. And the sponge will pick up anything it can. So that's about it. So I'm going to get that sorted. And I'll see you when I'm ready to assemble this next project. So there's been some change in events. It's almost been two, two, three weeks now. Um, and they, they died. As you can see. It's all kind of dead. Still moist in there. Still smelly. Now, I have two reasons that this could happen. The first reason is that the compost, not the compost, the, the soil mix I used might have been too strong. I, I remember reading the back of the instructions and it was saying something about like, just let the soil sit for five days before you add anything in it. So that could be it. I don't know. I have to look at it again. Or it could just be that it's too hot. Because, man, that sun is harsh. In saying that, though, they might come back. So I'm going to keep an eye on it and see what happens. Good news is the tank. So, as you can see, these fish are doing fine. The tank looks great. All the moss that I had up here just found the substrate. <laughs> I kind of cling to it. Now, I don't mind if the phoenix moss goes around the whole substrate. I really don't mind at all. This plant's doing really well. This plant's doing really well. We did have one here, but I took it out and placed it in the other one. These plants are doing all right. They're not bad. They do have some algae. I can't tell if you see it. It'll be right here. But some good news. Now, I'm really sweating. It's just been so hot. Some great news. The plant started propagating. And I'm going to show you that right now. So as you can see, this plant, it's already got runners. And there's one, two, three extra plants in there. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So if you remember my last project, it was to start up this, um, this tank. And the sponge filter has been running for about two weeks now, which is ready to go. I have had some other priorities. So I'm going to delay it and maybe I'll make another video on setting it up and things and hoping for the best. Right now though, everything is fine and I'm doing well.